Hi there, and welcome to Raylene Math. In this video, we're going to look at the function f of x equals sine x over x. Particularly, we are going to look at any weird behavior of this function. And so we first of all consider the domain. We know that denominators can't be equal to 0, which means that x can't be equal to 0, which means that the, denom the domain of this function is all reals except for 0. So if I were to substitute 0 in for x, we would see that the y value is sine 0 over 0, which is 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. So we expect on the graph of sine x over x that we either have a hole, or we have a jump, or we may have an oscillating discontinuity. Well, the easy way, easiest way to look or to find out whether we have a hole, jump, or oscillating discontinuity, an oscillation, is just to look at the graph. In addition to finding out what happens at x equal to 0, we're going to look at the end behavior. So we're going to look at three different limits. The first limit is the limit as x approaches 0 on this graph. What actually is happening to the height of the graph? What's y trying to approach in height? We're also going to look at the left end behavior. When we zoom out on the left side, what does the graph look like? If we have a horizontal line, then we would have a horizontal asymptote on the left. And we will also take a look at the right-hand end behavior limit as x approaches positive infinity. So let's go over to Desmos and take a look at the graph. Here I've got it typed in. What I like about Desmos here is if you just put the cursor on the same line as the function, it plots all of these really interesting points. And these interesting points, that one should be plotted. Huh. It's a maximum point, but it's not coming up as a plotted point. Interesting. But well, we have the x-intercepts, and we have the minimum, and we have the x-intercept, and we have a maximum. Why isn't this maximum point coming up? Well, it's not coming up, if you recall, because this is an x-coordinate of 0 here, and x equal to 0 is not in the domain of the function. So if we were to trace along here, we eventually get that when x is 0, the y-value is undefined, or not defined. So what does that mean? In the case of being undefined, or not defined, or not existing, we have a failure of one of three possibilities. Either the value is non-real, fails to be real, or the value fails to be a single value, uh, fails to be a single value, or the value fails to be a finite number. Well, what's happening when we say that the y-coordinate of sine 0 over 0, or 0 over 0, um, this is an equation. Let's just take the y equal to 0 over 0 and rearrange it by multiplying by 0. This ends up giving us a new equation that says 0y equal to 0. And how many solutions are there for y? Well, in this equation, there are an infinite number of solutions. So we get the case that the y-value fails to be a single value. I should write the word value here. And so since y can be lots of different values, we have lots of different heights on the graph when x is equal to 0. And since we can't have a function with lots of different heights, um, we can't actually have that x-coordinate in the domain of the function. So y fails to be a single solution, and therefore we have indeterminate. Okay, so that's what we were talking about earlier. What's really going on in the graph then? We see that we have no point on the graph, so it's like we have a hole. This point of what looks like 0, 1 is the point removed. And so we have a hole, which means that we have a limit value. The y-coordinate of the hole is the limit value. So we can actually just use that to evaluate our limit graphically using technology to say that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1, where the 1 represents the y-coordinate of the whole on the graph of sine x over x when x is equal to 0, or as x approaches 0. This is what this is saying. So just recall that the value that the limit equals is the height that y approaches. The value that limit equals implies the height that y approaches. It doesn't make sense to say that the limit approaches 1. The limit is a value. It's a number. And that value means what height does y approach on that graph. OK, let's just go back to Desmos, because I want to investigate this a little bit further. We can make a table of values here. 
and you can just add a table. And here this is x1. I'm going to make these points a different color. Let's make them orange so they stand out. And let's make the y1 expression this sine x over x with x replaced as y1. So all I'm doing here is typing x1. I'm not typing any subscript notation and I'm dividing by x1. Now this has a caution because I have an empty list, so until I plug a value here for x, I'm not going to get anywhere. Let's take this 3.14 value for x, that's pi, and that's our point there that we already had, the x-intercept. We could plot some other x-intercepts like 2 pi and so on, and we could just generate a table of values here. I'm really interested in not going towards the right yet, I want x to go towards 1. So let's just see what happens if we go from pi, which is about 3.14, to 2, to 1, to 0.9, to 0.8 and so on. As x gets closer and closer to 1 from the right hand side, what's happening to the output y values? They look like they're getting closer and closer to the height of the y coordinate of the hole. And so I can just put in a whole bunch of zeros there. Now this says equal to 1, but this is just a failure of decimals to show all of the missing decimal places. So if I actually go back a bit yeah, I think after 0 .001, there's not enough space to show the difference over here. This is not perfect, but it gives us an intuitive numerical sense that as x approaches 0, at least from the right-hand side, the y-coordinates are getting closer to a height of 1. And so, working numerically, we can write that one-sided limit to say that as x approaches 0 from the right, we put a superscript of plus here, on the graph of sine x over x, the y-coordinate approaches a value of 1. And similarly, if we had done it from the left-hand side, we would be choosing x values that are to the left of 0, namely negative 1 and so on. We can do that quickly. Um, I'm just going to delete a bunch of these rows in the table and start again. And so if I started from negative pi, and then as x approaches 0 from the left, we can type in a bunch of negative x-coordinates that are getting smaller in magnitude, negative 0 0.01 and so on, and we can see that the y-coordinates are getting closer and closer to a height of 1. So we have that the height that y approaches coming from the left-hand side of x equal to 0, or coming from the right-hand side of x equal to 0 is equal to 1. And so when the left-hand height and the right-hand height are the same, the overall limit or the overall single height that y approaches on this graph exists and is equal to 1. Okay, let's take a look at what happens when we zoom out then. If we just look at this graph from a zoomed out perspective, I'm going to take away this table of values now, and we're going to simply zoom out. We zoom out here. It's really hard to see what happens because that x-axis is in the way, so I'm going to turn off the axes. And turn off the grid. Uh, it doesn't allow me, oh, it lets me turn off the x-axis there. Okay, so I can keep my grid there, and if I look and continue to zoom out, I see that this graph eventually looks pretty horizontal. And in fact, the reason we needed to turn off the x-axis is because it looks like the line y equal to zero. I'll choose a different color for this. And if I turn off the blue, the red looks like it's underneath, and if I turn off the red, the blue looks like it's underneath. Now, obviously we know that sine of x over x is variable and not the constant of zero, but these two graphs do look alike when we zoom out far enough. And so this is what's happening when we are coming up with the end behavior. We're looking to see what the given function looks like when we zoom out far enough. Zooming out far enough means that we are letting x approach positive infinity or negative infinity. And that's essentially what's happening when we take these end behavior asymptotes. We see that the limit as x approaches negative infinity, that sine x over x approaches 0, and also on the right, as x approaches positive infinity, the graph of sine of x over x, the, that limit is equal to 0, which means that the uh, the graph of y equals sine x over x has a horizontal asymptote, a horizontal zoomed out shape, if what you want to think of as the asymptote is a zoomed out shape, has a horizontal asymptote of y equal to zero. Another way to look at that though is to consider the boundedness of the sine x graph. And since the sine x graph is bounded between the heights of negative one and one, we might just think about why that's true. If you know 
for any acute angle that the definition of an angle x is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and we know from geometry that the hypotenuse is opposite the largest angle in a right triangle, therefore the hypotenuse is the biggest side of a right triangle, then we know that the magnitude of the hypotenuse is bigger, or in some cases for some angles, like 90 degrees, um, equal to the magnitude of the opposite side. So the hypotenuse can never be exceeded in magnitude by the opposite because we have the biggest angle of the right angle opposite to the hypotenuse. And for that reason, we know that the sine of x, which is a fraction of one number opposite over hypotenuse, um, is never in magnitude going to be, so let me just put in magnitude here because it could be a positive or negative, is never going to be more than one. And that means that the sine x as a positive or a negative number is bounded between negative one and one. In other words, we have y equals negative one, y equals sine x over x, and y equals positive one as three graphs, and the sine x over x graph is always going to be bounded in between. So let's just take a look at those graphs here, y equals 1, y equals negative 1, and the sine x graph is always bounded between these two horizontal lines. So what does that mean for the sine x over x graph? Well, if we look at the boundedness of negative 1 less than or equal to sine x over x and consider constructing the new function that we want, the sine x over x graph, then we have that the given function is bounded between two new functions. And those two new functions are going to be negative 1 over x and positive 1 over x. So considering those are simple graphs to sketch, they can provide guidelines, really, as it were, for coming up with the other functions. The 1 over x is the parent reciprocal function in quadrants 1 or 3. And the negative 1 over x graph is the vertical reflection in quadrants 2 or 4. And so what we're saying is that that blue sine x over x graph that we know has a whole is always going to be bounded in between them. And another way to talk about bounding something is to squeeze or to sandwich. And so by the, the boundedness property of the sine x function, we get something called the squeeze theorem. Um, when we have a function that's squeezed or bounded or sandwiched between two other functions, if those two other functions converge, so here the green and the blue graphs are converging to a height of y equal to 0. I'm just going to erase this theorem, the word theorem. We have that all of these functions, when we take a look at what happens when x approaches infinity, we know that the red graph approaches a height of 0 because we have a horizontal asymptote on that graph. y is approaching the height of 0. And we know that the green graph is also approaching a height of 0. And since the blue graph is always in between the green graph and the red graph, and the red graph and the green graph are reaching the same height, it stands to reason, by the squeeze theorem, that the sine x over x graph is also approaching a height of 0. And so here's another way to understand, as x approaches infinity, that sine x over x is going to a height of 0. So we have y approaches 0 when x approaches infinity. The same thing happens on the other side, because the green and the red graphs also go to a height of 0 when we zoom out on the left. And so if we just show that new boundedness, we have that negative 1 over x graph looks like this, the 1 over x graph looks like this, and the sine x over x graph is always bounded in between. And so there you have it, looking at the graphical and numerical and algebraic behavior of this function gives us some important results, namely that the limit as x approaches 0 on that function x sine x over x is equal to 1. And since f of 0 does not exist or is undefined because we have an indeterminate value, but the limit value does exist, this suggests or tells us that we have a whole at 0, 1 on the graph of y equals sine x over x. Furthermore, the end behavior limits as x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity on these graphs are both equal to zero and that tells us that we have a left horizontal asymptote and we also have a right horizontal asymptote of y equal to zero for this function. And there you have it, looking at the behavior of sine x over x using numerical, graphical, algebraic, and a little bit of verbal techniques. Thanks for checking out Raylene Math.